Axios is an alternative to the JavaScript Fetch API. It has some additional benefits, like automatic JSON data transformation. Like the Fetch API, it's a promise-based HTTP client and works in the browser. In this lesson, we're going to show examples of how to use Axios with the JSON Placeholder service. JSON Placeholder is a free online REST API with fake data that makes it easy for us to focus on learning Axios with Vue instead of worrying about setting up a database. It should be noted that some endpoints, like Firebase, use a custom toolset to interact with their APIs. We'll cover Firebase later on in this series. We can install Axios directly from within VS Code. Go up to the menu, select Terminal, then New Terminal, or use the shortcut on the right. The terminal will open with the project's path already selected. From there, just type npm install axios and hit enter. Once the installation is complete, we'll see axios in the list of dependencies in the package.json file. When we want to use it in a component in view, we have to import the axios package above the config object in the component script block. Axios allows us to send HTTP requests in one of two ways. We can pass a configuration object to its constructor that consists of at least the request method and the URL we want to send the request to. If we're creating or updating data, we also include a data object. Alternatively, we can use one of the Axios convenience methods. These methods take up to three arguments with only the first parameter the URL we want to send the request to being required. We'll use the convenience methods in this lesson. To keep the demonstration simple, we'll do everything in the mounted lifecycle hook. To receive data with Axios, we use the get method with the URL of the API we send the request to as argument. If we go over to the JSON placeholder site, we'll see the resource URLs we can use under the roots section. For our example, we want to fetch only a single blog post, so we can copy this URL that says posts, 1. The get method will return a response object. And because Axios is promise-based, we can chain a then block to the request to handle the response. To demonstrate, let's add a then block and use it to log the data we get back to the console. If we run the example in the browser and open the console, we'll see an object in the log. If we expand this object and then its data property, we'll see the blog post data we retrieved. So, if we want to access individual values like the post title, we have to do it through response.data. But, logging the data to the console isn't very useful, so let's show it on the page. The blog posts from JSON placeholder have four properties, namely ID, user ID, title, and body. We'll create an array called posts and store the data inside it. Then, we'll output the data in a header and paragraph in the template. If we run the example in the browser, we'll see the blog post. So, the get method works as expected. Getting multiple data entries works the same. In our case, the JSON placeholder API requires us to use posts without the number as the resource URL. And of course, we'll need to use a v4 loop to output the data in the template. If we take a look in the browser, we'll see all the posts from the API. As a side note, fetching data on page load and handling a loading state works the same as it does with the Fetch API, which we covered in the previous lesson. To send data with Axios, we use the post convenience method. The method requires an object with the data we want to send as the second argument. As an example, Let's change the method from get to post and add an object with some dummy data. We'll also log the data to the console 
to help the demonstration. If we run the example in the browser and take a look in the console, we'll see the object with the data we just sent. In the data property, we can see the new post was added with an ID of 101. JSON placeholder only has 100 posts, so we know the operation was successful. The data can also come from a pre-existing object, like a data property that contains captured form input. In this example, we have a data property called PostData that receives the data from the form with vModel when the submit event fires. Axios then uses the object as the data it posts to JSON placeholder. Let's go to the browser and enter some dummy data. If we submit the form, we'll see the console update with the post we just created. To update an entire dataset with Axios, we use the put method with the data we want to send as an object in the second argument. And, as we mentioned in the previous lesson with the fetch API, when we use put, we have to specify all the keys in the object, even if we don't need to update their values. To demonstrate, let's change our example to use put and add the ID property. JSON placeholder also requires us to specify the post number we want to update in the resource URL. If we take a look in the browser, we'll see the object with the updated data in the console. To update only certain values in a dataset, we use the patch method. This time, we don't have to specify all the values in the object, we can just update, say, the title. If we run the example in the browser, we'll see the title was updated. We cover the technical differences between put and patch in the written version of the Fetch API lesson. We'll leave a link to it in the description if you're interested. To delete data with Axios, we use the delete method with the URL of the resource we want to delete as the only argument. To demonstrate, let's change the method from patch to delete and remove the second argument. When we take a look in the browser, the data property will be empty, confirming the deletion. As a side note, JSON placeholder only fakes deleting the data. On a real server, the data will be deleted. Axios makes it easy to handle errors by giving us an error object that we can use in a catch block. To demonstrate, let's change the method to get and force an error by entering the wrong URL. Then, we'll add a catch block and log the error object to the console. Because there's no resource on JSON placeholder called wrong, we see a 404 error in the console. In the next video, we'll learn how to work with data stored locally in a JSON file. Thank you for watching, we'll see you in the next one.